Master was a little crazy. He had spent too many years reading books overseas, talked to himself in his office, did not always return greetings, and had too much hair. Ugwa's auntie said this in a low voice as they walked on the path. But he is a good man, she added. And as long as you work well, you will eat well. You will even eat meat every day. She stopped to spit. The saliva left her mouth with a sucking sound and landed on the grass. Ugwa did not believe that anybody, not even this master he was going to live with, ate meat every day. He did not disagree with his auntie, though, because he was too choked with expectation, too busy imagining his new life away from the village. They had been walking for a while now since they got off the lorry at the motor park, and the afternoon sun burned the back of his neck. But he did not mind. He was prepared to walk hours more in even hotter sun. He had never seen anything like the streets that appeared after they went past the university gates, streets so smooth and tarred that he itched to lay his cheek down on them. He would never be able to describe to his sister Anulika how the bungalows here were painted the color of the sky and sat side by side like polite, well-dressed men, how the hedges separating them were trimmed so flat on top that they looked like tables wrapped with leaves. His auntie walked faster, her slippers making slap-slap sounds that echoed in the silent street. Ugu wondered if she too could feel the coal tar getting hotter underneath, through her thin soles. They went past a sign, Odim Street, and Ugu mouthed, Street, as he did whenever he saw an English word that was not too long. He smelt something sweet, heady, as they walked into a compound and was sure it came from the white flowers clustered on the bushes at the entrance. The bushes were shaped like slender hills. The lawn glistened. Butterflies hovered above. I told Master you will learn everything fast, oh, siso, siso, his auntie said. Ugu nodded attentively, although she had already told him this many times, as often as she told him the story of how his good fortune came about. While she was sweeping the corridor in the mathematics department a week ago, she heard Master say that he needed a houseboy to do his cleaning, and she immediately said she could help speaking before his typist or office messenger could offer to bring someone. I will land fast, auntie, Ugu said. He was staring at the car in the garage. A strip of metal ran around its blue body like a necklace. Remember what you will answer whenever he calls you is yes, sir. Yes, sir, Ugu repeated. They were standing before the glass door. Ugu held back from reaching out to touch the cement wall, to see how different it would feel from the mud walls of his mother's hut that still bore the faint patterns of molding fingers. For a brief moment, he wished he were back there now, in his mother's hut, under the dim coolness of the thatch roof, or in his auntie's hut, the only one in the village with a corrugated iron roof. His auntie tapped on the glass. Ugu could see the white curtains behind the door. A voice said in English, Yes, come in. They took off their slippers before walking in. Ugu had never seen a room so wide. Despite the brown sofas arranged in a semicircle, the side tables between them, the shelves crammed with books, and the center table with a vase of red and white plastic flowers, the room still seemed to have too much space. Master sat in an armchair, wearing a singlet and a pair of shorts. He was not sitting upright, but slanted, a book covering his face, as though oblivious that he had just asked people in. Good afternoon, sir. This is the child, Ugu's auntie said. Master looked up. His complexion was very dark, 
like old bark, and the hair that covered his chest and legs was a lustrous, darker shade. He pulled off his glasses. The child, the houseboy, sir. Oh yes, you have brought the houseboy. Igbo tagoya. Master's Igbo felt feathery in Ugu's ears. It was Igbo coloured by the sliding sounds of English, the Igbo of one who spoke English often. He will work hard, his auntie said. He's a very good boy. Just tell him what he should do. Thanks, sir.